Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to six things that we learn from Bradford City Nil at Stockport County Nil. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help. I'll get your thoughts in as well on the six talking points that I do go on to discuss in today's video down in the comment section down. Down below now unfortunately it's just me for this episode i'm having to record this at two o'clock in the morning so surprisingly there is unfortunately no guest but we've got six very hard talking points to go through because it was such a scrappy game there's not really much happened in the game it was pretty much a waste of time to be honest with you because of the conditions and the state of the pitch it was actually quite hard to pick out six talking points in today's video but bear with me for it make sure to drop a like on there for me subscribe if you're new as well and let's get into it so starting out then with box number one i have gone with a yellow box for clark Adore. obviously handed his first league start for what feels like absolutely forever, to be honest with you. First league start, I believe, under Graham Alexander. And I thought for the first hour, he was on track to get a green box. I thought he was really, really good. Showed a lot of quality in the final third. I was really impressed with his trickery and his skill. And, you know, was unlucky really not to get a couple of goals early on in that first half. I think he had two chances in that first half. The first one was where he took about three or four stockpot players completely out of the game with a number of different fake shots. But then when he eventually got his shot off, it was unfortunately blocked though. And then the second, one it's a great pass in from Jonathan Tompkinson he works the space very well and he shot unfortunately just uh, does it just go just wide but I feel like Ben Hinchcliffe might have probably saved that to be honest with you because he's obviously a very very good goalkeeper but the thing is with Adore after about the hour mark maybe 70th minute mark he just wasn't involved in the game all too much and when he's not offering much offensively he doesn't really offer much defensively he's not the type of player who's going to want to stick his foot in he's someone who I feel like tries to play the game without any contact he never really wants to have the ball and he's He's got a defender right up behind him and then try and take him on. He never wants to be in a physical battle because I feel like he knows he probably would lose that. But on the ball, he showed a lot of skill and trickery in that first hour. And like I say, he was on track to get a green box. And it's disappointing that he wasn't able to keep it up at for the 90 minutes. But I do think after maybe about 70 minutes, he should have probably come off for Bobby Poynton. In my opinion, we're going to talk about Graham Alexander and the lack of substitutions later on in today's video. When you're playing so many games, I feel like substitutions, uh, so many games, sorry, in a short period of time and you're having to put a lot of energy in there. I feel like we could have maybe made more changes in my opinion. I think Adore gave a good hour, 70 minutes, and with the lack of game time that he's had recently, it would have made sense in my opinion for us then to look to change it because just th freshening things up and all that sort of stuff and we need him fit for the next game with Jamie Walker going to be out for a number of games now and Alex Patterson a little bit longer term than that as well. This is now Adore's opportunity to make that spot his own and I feel like if he performs consistently there is a good player in Clark Adoy provides goal contributions as well was unlucky not to really get on the score sheet tonight but for me personally I'm going to go with the yellow box started out brilliantly but ended the game not really being involved all too much moving on then to box number two I have gone with a red box for Lewis Smith now Lewis Smith was the match official today he's not really well I said today yesterday sorry we don't really speak about match officials quite a lot on the channel, especially on these six things we learnt, because there's normally more important things to talk about. But he certainly had a big impact on the game, in my opinion. I thought both ways he was quite poor, but I certainly don't think he was a... In favor of Bradford City whatsoever, I think the linesman as well on the Midland Road side was absolutely shocking. In that first half, Oluwafe was, I think, offside six occasions. He only gave it once. Thankfully, the once that he did give it was when Oluwafe stuck his chance into the back of the net, but really, really poor from the lino. There was a number of decisions as well from the linesman on both sides where they're waiting for the referee to, to give a decision, and then they put their flag up afterwards, and that is not the whole purpose of a lino, especially when they stood... 10, 15 yards away and the referee stood a good 30, 40 yards away. So I was really disappointed with the linesman, but the match official was giving so many soft free kicks. Gilead's booking was so soft. I mean, the stockpot player goes to clear the ball. I think Gilead actually gets there first and then the stockpot player kicks up onto the bottom of Gilead's boot and Gilead gets booked for it. And I thought it was a really, really poor decision. And I was surprised to see Gilead not maybe pick up a second yellow because after that, within the next 10, 15 minute period, he committed another two or three fouls. Now, all of them were very, very light, very soft. And I think if any of them would have been a second yellow card, it would have been an outrage. But with the way that referee was going on, I certainly wasn't surprised. And I was quite disappointed with his performance. If I am honest with you, like I say, there wasn't really many 
many talking points to come out of the game. The match official certainly was, I thought, on a number of times he got the decision the wrong way. He was giving stupid fouls a lot of the time. You know, any time there was some sort of even slightly aggressive challenge, even if you won the ball, he was giving it as a free kick. And that is not what you want to see as a match paying fan. You don't want to see the referee constantly breaking the play up if it's a good challenge that's flying in. And that's the problem with EFL refs. They all referee the game differently and there's just no consistency. You do, so you don't really know what's a foul, what isn't, because some referees if you win the ball then it doesn't really matter what happens afterwards whereas other referees if you go in with any sort of aggression or force then it's going to be a foul or even a mandatory booking and I think that is a problem with EFL referees is that they all officiate the rules differently and that is frustrating at times but Lewis Smith for me had a really really poor game and thankfully there was no major decision that he made that decided the match but there was a number of times where I was having to point out the match officials not just the referee the line on the Midland Road side as well both of them really really poor and definitely deserve a red box in my opinion. Moving on then into box number three our first green box of today's video is of course for Brad Halliday would it be a six things that we learn video if Brad Halliday was not getting a green box he dealt with who someone who is arguably the best left wing back in the league in Ubu, Ubu Tori very very well now I know a lot of Stockport fans don't really rate and I'm not really too sure why because if you look at his statistics from his time at Salford there's clearly a very very good player in there in my opinion but I've seen a lot of Stockport fans kind of blaming the fact that Stockport didn't win the game on Tori and I was really con confused by that because in my opinion he's one of the best in the whole division but regardless Brad Halliday had a really good game the amount of times that Tori was trying to take on Halliday and he failed to do so Halliday was getting the block in he was stopping the cross there was a very, very small amount of crosses that were coming into the box. I think when they were coming in, they were poor, to be honest with you, and I thought we dealt with them very well. A lot of them failing to beat the first man in our penalty area, which is obviously a good thing for us. But Halliday, for me, didn't offer as much going forward as what he normally does. I was trying to have some nice link-up play with Gilead and Tomkinson providing the overlaps, but Stockport were very compact in their defending, and I thought it was quite hard for us to break down. He wasn't really getting forward too much, but defensively, you have to be switched on against the good Stockport side. All it takes is one lapse in concentration, and they could have had a good opportunity. But Halliday, for me, always consistent, always a very, very good performer. Probably my man of the match, to be honest with you. I think if Adol would have kept up his performance for 90 minutes, I would have probably gone with him, but Halliday, if in doubt, give the man of the match to Brad Halliday because I thought he was really really good I think Kieron Kelly got the sponsors man of the match I wouldn't say I agree with that I thought all three of the centre halves had some good moments and some bad moments I would say one of them had a particularly better game than the other two and we'll come on to that later on in today's video but in terms of Brad Halliday really really solid defensively and I feel like as each game goes by more and more opposition fans are starting to realise why Rafa fans think he's comfortably the best right back in the entire division because he very rarely gets beaten 1v1 he's so solid defensively Defensively, he's clever, intelligent. Well, he didn't offer much going forward in this game. I thought defensively he was absolutely brilliant. So that is why Brad Halliday is our third box and he gets a green one from me. Before we get in to our next box then, please make sure to drop a like on there for me and subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. Get your thoughts in down in the comment section down below. Let's go check out box number four. Moving on then into box number four. This time we have gone with a yellow box for Liam Rydell. His first appearance under Graham Alexander since Alexander's first match against Barrow. He obviously went off in that match with concussion. Lewis Richards has been playing since then and has been playing pretty well but apparently he's picked up some sort of a niggle in that match against Morecambe which ruled him out for this game unfortunately and when I saw the team that had come out and I saw Liam Rydog in that starting 11 I was disappointed because I think as a left back he's not awful at this level but as a left wing back he just doesn't offer enough going forward he's not got the engine or the legs to play that role anymore for me and in my opinion I'd rather seen Gilead play at left wing back and then maybe you have McDonald in midfield or potentially somebody different but I can't say I was the biggest fan of that. In terms of his actual performance, I mean, I'm kind of going to contradict myself here but I thought going forward he wasn't too bad he did put some nice crosses into the box but defensively I thought he was quite weak I thought Noyle had the better of him on a number of occasions with an incident in the second half where he was trying to shield the ball and one just tackled it off of him so easily he cut the ball back for Crowsdale and thankfully he got his shot all wrong he went to shoot with his right foot he ended up missing it completely and it hit his standing leg and ended up we were able to clear it which was obviously good for us but on another day that could have flown into the top corner or at least into the back of the net and we're looking at another Liam Rydow mistake that has cost us a goal I think as soon as Richards is back fit and available in my opinion I think he should come straight back into the side because as much as I don't think Rydow is a bad stop gap every now and again if you really really need to play him in there I certainly think Richards is the much better of the two in my opinion and he's about 10 years younger so there's lots of room to, for him to grow and develop in my opinion I, hopefully 
would like to say that that's a position we'd try and improve on in the January transfer window because while I think Richards is steady for this level, I certainly think we could improve on him and Liam Rydalg for me isn't good enough. So if we can move Rydalg on and get somebody else in, in that position, I certainly think that would be a smart piece of business for us to do. I think we need someone as good as Halliday on the left side and then you'd be looking at two very, very good wing backs at this level. If you were to name someone off the top of my head, I don't think I'd be able to do so because there's not really many good wing backs. Or if they do, they normally cost a little bit of a premium. And I think even Burstow or Bristow has joined at Stockport on loan at starting in January. So it was good for us that he was unavailable. He was brilliant for Tramia last season. I think he's moved to the MLS now, I want to say. And he has obviously joined at Stockport. Well, obviously, that won't officially go through though until January. But Liam Rydow for me... Not great defensively, not awful going forward. I think that bounces out though at a yellow box, so that's what he's getting at four, our fourth box for us for me. Moving on then into our penultimate box. Now I mentioned earlier about how I felt one centre half had a slightly better game than the other two and that is why I've given a green box at two at Jonathan Tompkins and I think he only really had one maybe two poor moments in the match. One in the first half I can remember when Olafe bodied him and he kind of got put on his backside and then in the second half there was a couple of occasions where Wooten was kind of getting the better of Tomkinson but apart from that I thought overall he had a really really solid game. The pass he played, uh, he played to Clark Adore in the first half to nearly get an assist from was an absolutely outstanding ball and I think again he showed that he can be physical, he can be robust if needed but he's a very very good defender, more than competent at this level and the way that he tries to overlap on that right hand side and link up with Halliday and Gilead on a number of occasions it's great to see in my opinion and like I say Platt for me had some good moments, he had some really good tackles in there but then at times he got kind of got caught out of position slightly and was maybe diving into tackles that he didn't need to. Kelly, very similar, I thought solid defensively for the large part but again got caught out on a few occasions. I don't think either of them were particularly bad. I just think out of the three centre halves, Tomkinson had the slightly better game in my opinion. Like I mentioned earlier, there wasn't really many talking points. I think every play was very similar. There was only a very few fine margins between them all but Tomkinson for me was someone who I felt impacted the game in a positive way. It's another clean sheet as well that we need to think about. To keep a clean sheet against the league leaders is obviously very positive but for me personally I thought Tomkinson had a decent impact on the game and I don't know if Norwich have some sort of a recall option in his contract in January. Normally with our loans, it's if they play a certain amount of games and they're not able to do so. At this moment in time, Tomkinson is playing week in, week out and I feel like I don't really see a reason as to why he would be recalled by Norwich because he is playing consistent football and I think if any of our centre-halves are going to move on, I think in my opinion it'll probably be Sam Stubbs and maybe Timmy Odessina as well for me and Tomkinson, he's playing week in, week out. I don't really see a reason why Norwich would want to recall him. Hopefully they don't because he's clearly a very good player at this level. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Who do you think is better, Jonathan Tomkinson or Romney Critchlow? But like I mentioned, Tomkinson, brilliant against Stockport and that's why I've gone with a green box for him. And we move on then to our final box of today's video. It is a yellow box for Graham Alexander. Now, I thought the starting 11 for what we've currently got available at this moment in time was not too bad. Like I mentioned, I would have rather have seen Gilead at left wing back and maybe McDonald in the midfield but I didn't hate it all too much. The thing that is slightly frustrating me a little bit with Graham Alexander, and I mentioned it earlier on in the video, it's the lack of substitutions and what he's going with as options off the bench. I'm I'm not really getting it at this moment in time. It was great to see Bobby Poynton back involved in the match day squad, but it shouldn't take a number of injuries for Poynton to be on the bench. For me personally, he should be a minimum on the bench in my opinion. And you look at some of the options on there, like a Derbyshire, an Osadibe, are they really going to come on and affect the game? But I think when you're playing so many games in such a short period of time, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Is it like four games in 12 days? That's a rough guess, maybe. I think you need to be making more substitutions and freshening it up a lot because you saw it again tonight. I mean, you saw it in the game against Morecambe, but specifically tonight, the midfield were knackered. Gilead was knackered. I mean, you know what you're going to get with Gilead. He's going to go and go and go until his legs cave in, but you could see he was getting very tired. There were some times where he was very slowly jogging back, even walking at times well because he was knackered. Clark Adore was the same and I feel like sometimes you just need to freshen things up. Why after 70 minutes did McDonald not come on for Gilead? Did Poynton not come on for Adore? Then both are more than capable of playing in that role and even if you maybe slightly change the system and you go with Smallwood and McDonald as more conservative midfielders and you give Bobby Poynton a free role... I just feel like we needed to change something if we were going to break Stockport down. It seemed like we were very happy with the way the game was going. Obviously, we, we restricted them to very, very little chances. They had an early corner, which caused a little bit of pinball in our penalty area. Apart from that, I don't really remember much off the top of my head that they really did create while they had 
you know, a lot of wide playing of a lot of direct balls. They didn't really create anything really clear cut of Lewis didn't really have a, a save to make is maybe the best way of wording that. But I feel like going forward, we needed to change something. And you look at the options off the bench, like I mentioned, Adabija and Osadibe are not going to change the game. Harry Chapman, not involved in the match day squad. Adam Wilson, not involved in the match day squad. And I know they're naturally wingers, but what is to say that we couldn't have brought maybe an Andy Cook off, a Clark Adore off, and you go to like a 5-2-3 instead of a 5-1-2-2. You know, you go with maybe natural width and you try and get them cutting inside and shooting more rather than just trying to go along and hope that we pick up some second balls. I feel like sometimes you need to be able to adapt and change up your style of play because Alexander, obviously, he started out in the 4-4-2 and that seems to be the way that Alexander has managed and that's the formation that he's played throughout a lot of his managerial career. But clearly, the back three and the system we're currently playing has been working quite a lot recently. Obviously, in the game against Morecambe, we conceded a couple sloppy goals in there and I feel like it wasn't really the formation's fault, to be honest with you, but in this one against Stockport, we never really looked like properly breaking them down. Andy Cook had a good chance, but it was a brilliant save from their goalkeeper, so you can't really complain all too much. I just think my only slight annoyance coming out of that game is, could we have made more substitutions to try and impact the game, to give us more legs, to give us more energy? They didn't really make any substitutions. I think they only made the two at half time, and that was it. But again, they didn't really have many options on the bench which I thought would come on and really impact the game apart from the two that obviously did come on and, and I thought Crowsdale and Wutton had a big impact on the game. They Crowsdale gave Stockport a lot of control in that midfield. Wutton gave them something to hit when they were going long and I thought he did quite a good job of being a target man in my opinion but I must say I was slightly disappointed with Graham Alexander's lack of substitutions and that is why I've gone with the yellow box for him unfortunately. He's had a lot of green boxes so far but in this one against Stockport I feel like he could have done more to maybe try and get them three points. But anyway Anyway, I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me if you could try 80 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in down in the comment section down below on our six talking points from today's video. That being Clark Adore, Lewis Smith, the match referee, Brad Halliday, Liam Rydog, Jonathan Tompkinson, and Graham Alexander. Thank you all very much for watching, and apologies again, it was just a solo episode. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Do you prefer it just be me solo? Do you prefer it with Corbin? Do you prefer it with Frank? Or do you prefer it with all three of us as well? Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all very soon for another one. Peace.